Sewing on buttons can be super simple with stitch number 60. I do like to lower down my feed dog, so reach underneath the cord where the foot, co foot control plugs in and lower those down. Um, and foot number six, uh, stitch number 60 calls for foot number 18, an optional button sew on foot. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how that works. And it really lets you see where you're going to be going in and out of these holes and provides you with an optional shank should you have a button that's a little bit on the thick side. Now, a lot of times people go, well, what size do I need this? It starts off with about uh, almost four millimeters in distance. You're gonna be surprised to find that a small button and a big button, when those little eyes are lined up, let me get them, there, there they are, you can actually see through both the holes and you will kind of be pretty much whatever size it is. So you definitely just need to get it started. You're gonna notice your needle's gonna be hanging off the, on the left hand side. So we wanna turn the hand wheel to make sure that that goes down into the left hole first. These little toes on the foot are gonna help stabilize the button. So it's not gonna actually go um, slipping around. Now this stitch starts off with one, two, three stitches in the left hole before it jumps over. Now I wanna test and make sure that I'm going to not break my button by hitting it with my needle or break my needle. So I hand turn it down into the right hole. Once both holes have been stitched in, you can go ahead and step on the foot control. I'm gonna go a little slow here because you're gonna notice that it'll do some locking on the right, go back and forth, locking on the left, back and forth, locking on the right, and then it stops. And then all you have to do is lift the foot up, slide everything towards you so it unhooks itself from the little uh, pin that we've been stitching over and you have that nice little length of shank of thread so something that's buttoning underneath it has a place for it to go. Now if you don't want it to be a little loose, you can actually take that little button off by the screw, take the little pin off by loosening the screw and it will uh, swivel up and you can get it out of the way. If you have a four holer, depending on its size, some, what I like to do is actually start on the holes that are on the front, do those, and then all you have to do is slide back and then do the set behind it. Once again, make sure that you always test your swing of the needle. One, two, three, let it swing, and we test to make sure we can get in on the other side there. And then we can just slide it back. Kind of leave part of it still connected. Catch the hole, one, two, three. Let the jump go, sink it down, and let it finish out. And a little fray check on these threads will make sure that they never get loose or come undone after you've sewed them. Another foot that you can use is actually foot number nine, another optional foot, but if you happen to have this for some free motion quilting or something, you can use this, lower it down on your presser foot and be also be able to see where you're going as you go ahead and line up the holes. Some of our machines recommend this foot and some recommend foot number 18, the button sew on foot.